This video is sponsored by Paradox Interactive. Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today we're taking a little tour into the new Crusader Kings 3 DLC and free update, diving into tours and tournaments, and some of the free features that are coming at the same time. Keep in mind that the Chapter 2 DLC bundle for CK3 is available for just five more dollars than the Tours and Tournaments DLC alone, but it gives you access to do additional pieces of DLC on top of Tours and Tournaments when they ultimately release. If you know you enjoy Crusader Kings 3, the bundle is an absolute steal, and for more info, you can check out the link in the pinned comment down below. Now, with no more time to waste, let's get to looking at some new dirty tricks that you can pull off in CK3 going forward with all the fresh new mechanics that are being introduced today. Some of these are completely new opportunities, and others are new ways of doing familiar things with a twist. So, with timestamps down below, let's begin. Entrenching your Regency at any point in time, you can quickly take a look to see who your own regent will be should you choose to leave the realm or otherwise become indisposed, and similarly, you can see who your liege is going to make regent if they find themselves in need of one. There are a variety of factors that come into play when determining a regent. Familial ties, relations, position on the council, powerful vassals, court language if applicable, and even traits. Somebody playing by the rules would care about all these things, but a career regent knows none of this can stand in the face of a good old power play. While becoming your liege's go-to regent is great, the real power grab is in becoming the regent to a child ruler, and at the risk of saying something that sounds terrible out of context, the younger, the better. Ugh. If you're able to become regent to a child who is just a couple years old at most, you'll have a very long time period in which to entrench your regency and basically become the de facto sovereign. So. Don't bother befriending your liege. Instead, befriend your fellow vassals. Seek out hooks and secrets and opportunities to blackmail. Get as many of them to like you as possible, hosting feasts and hunts to get to know them better. Then, when you've got enough of them eating out of your hand, try and set your liege up for an accident. We'll discuss some new ways to go about this later in the video too, but whatever approach you take, the goal here is to put their child on the throne. Once that happens, you can make a move against the regent for the child. This will typically be their surviving parent, or it might be a fellow vassal, but if enough people are upset at the current regent, or are bigger fans of you than them, it's only a matter of time before they're overthrown. This is a hostile scheme just like any other, so having hooks, friendships, or good relations with potential agents is a great way to get them on your side. If you were unable to pull all that off, the regent will inevitably upset the people of the realm when they're required to make decisions in the name of the sovereign. This building resentment in the form of strife can work in your favor, though it can take time to accumulate. Keep in mind that if you're the regent, this very same scheme can be used against you should you upset the realm enough. Make sure to take a balanced approach to abusing your powers and host the occasional grand feast or hunt with powerful vassals of the realm to reduce this level of strife. Now. Whether you become the regent by actually being the preferred choice, by eliminating those ahead of you in line, or through a good old-fashioned overthrowing, you'll want to try and get to that stage as early as possible in the young sovereign's life. You'll need every year up until they turn 16 to entrench your regency. Apart from regency-related events that give you a chance to tip the scales of power in your favor, every two years you'll be able to use prestige, piety, or gold to swing them further in your favor as well. and. As you cross certain thresholds, you'll get access to more actions, and your regency will become more and more entrenched. At a certain point, the liege is no longer able to end the regency without a significant investment in tipping the scales back in their favor or waiting for them to tip naturally over time. You'll eventually find yourself able to manipulate your liege in otherwise impossible ways, for example, forcing a marriage, and at the very end of the track, you'll even have the option to usurp your liege, taking their position permanently. In order to do the latter, you'll need to pull together a coalition of fellow vassals, and even before that, some of the abuses of power require you to be on good terms with the targets of your abuse. As a regent with a certain degree of sway, for example, you can forge claims on titles and then revoke them from fellow vassals and take them for yourself, all in the name of your liege. This is a great way to use powers typically reserved for your liege to become more powerful yourself, setting you up for success should the regency come to a premature end for some reason or another. However, just like a vassal can say no to their liege as they make demands and 
potentially kick off a war, they can do the same to the regent. So make sure you're improving your relations accordingly, hosting feasts and hunts to continue to improve opinions even after the regency is secured. You can similarly imprison your liege's vassals, and you can even use your prestige to siphon wealth away from them too, if not from your liege himself. These tools can be used to further empower yourself and your friends, and to further entrench your regency even more. Siphon wealth from the treasury, then use that money to tip the scales of power and to host a grand feast or hunt that replenishes your lost prestige while also improving your relations with your liege's other vassals. Take money from your rival vassals instead, and then use their money to strengthen your position in a similar way, entrenching your regency until you can simply take the throne for yourself. It's good to be king, yes, but with enough manipulation, it's good to be regent, too. Plots without schemes The big trouble with schemes is the challenge of keeping your co-conspirators quiet if you're able to convince them to join you in the first place. Everybody always has their opinions or moral qualms about things like patricide, but with the help of tours and tournaments, you can circumvent some of that and rely purely on your own intrigue skill instead. There are a variety of reasons for wanting to kill somebody in Crusader Kings 3, from usurping your father to splitting a foreign realm with the help of Confederate partition, and though you'll have to rely on the old methods of scheming to plot against more distant targets, those that are geographically closer to you can be taken care of by other means that are less reliant on the assistance of others. With that said, as with regular schemes, it's still a good idea to have your spy master supporting your schemes, and having a spouse with a high intrigue skill set to support such actions will also help your chances of success. Once you've got all that in place, you should take a look at hosting either a grand tournament, a feast, or a hunt, as these are the ones that allow you to invite the broadest category of guests, increasing the likelihood that your target might attend, and they allow you to take on the murder intent while also being easier to actually organize. You can't really do a grand wedding without having promised a grand wedding, for example, so you're better off sticking to things like the grand tournament, the feast, or the hunt. The big determining factor when it comes to which of these to host has to do with your target. People will decline an invitation if they're not likely to arrive at the event on time, and so you'll want to make sure the location of your event is as close to the target as possible. In the case of foreign rulers, fellow vassals, or your own vassals, their default location is at their capital, and so you have to consider the distance from their capital to your event when choosing where to host it. While a feast or tournament can only be hosted where you have holdings, a hunt can be hosted in regions without holdings, often much closer to your target. Choose accordingly, and then ensure your guest list includes your target, and then set your intent to murder them. If your target isn't automatically put in your guest list, you're not. Just leave the intent as something a bit more neutral and once the event is confirmed, you can manually invite people to activities. They'll take into consideration a few factors, including their opinion of you and how far away the event is, and if you've done your due diligence, they'll accept the invitation and be on their way. Use this to invite your target to the event, and once they accept the invitation, you can open the event screen up and change your intent to murder them. While there's a slight chance the opportunity never arises, Having the intent set this way will present you with at least one or two chances to pull the trigger, at which point in time it's all a matter of your intrigue skill, boosted by your spy master and spouse as described earlier. Keep in mind that these can be risky. Even with success, it's possible that somebody sees you in action, and if you fail, you're likely to make your target suspicious. There are a few different ways for things to play out here, and you can even choose to simply observe your target to bolster the more old-fashioned hostile schemes for a couple of decades instead. Invite your own liege for a feast, call your brother over for a hunt, or host a grand tournament featuring kings across the continent. At the end of the day, if you're not afraid to get your hands dirty, wars and tournaments provide excellent ways to get the job done yourself. Friends in Foreign Places Let's say you don't want to do the job yourself, Let's say you still want to use a good old-fashioned scheme to get it done instead. Maybe you can't get your target to accept an invite, or maybe your own intrigue skill just isn't that great, even with the help of your spy master and spouse. Well, with tours and tournaments, there's a couple new ways to get into enemy courts so that you can then recruit them as agents for your schemes instead. When pursuing these methods, keep in mind that when applicable, the spy master and spouse of your target are the most valuable potential agents at your disposal. Try to prioritize them as targets before anybody else. Here, rather than using the murder intent for your events, you're going to use the befriend or seduce intents as appropriate. If your culture has ritualized friendships, befriending somebody in this manner 
will allow you to eventually make them your best friend, which gives you a strong hook to force them into a scheme. Seduction, meanwhile, would allow you to court a foreigner and potentially make them your lover. This makes them at least a little more likely to join your schemes. Keep in mind that befriending and seducing seems to be a little bit harder during grand tournaments than during hunts and feasts, but people are also able to travel further for grand tournaments as they take longer to get started, which means people from further out are more likely to arrive on time and actually be there. Hosting events is expensive, so make sure you're choosing appropriately, balancing the various pros and cons based on your needs, and again, remember that getting hooks from your best friends is dependent on other factors, such as your culture having ritualized friendship as a tradition. That's not to say friends and lovers don't provide other benefits. Befriending and seducing your most powerful vassals is a great way to prevent them from joining factions too, and that aside, even if you fail to seduce or befriend somebody at an event, you can at least set the groundwork for future attempts. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again, and hey, it doesn't have to be your own events where you attempt to make a move. If you're invited to an event hosted by a third party, you can take a look at their guest list and plan your intent accordingly. For example, when the folks at Paradox Interactive invited me and a bunch of other content creators over to Blenheim Palace just a few weeks ago, I had a few different plans while attending the grand tournament. Who did I befriend? Who did I seduce? Who did I kill? If one of your favorite CK3 YouTubers randomly stops uploading videos and you never hear from them again, I'm not saying it's my fault, but anybody could have fallen into the giant lake on the ground, so who says I pushed them? There's certainly nothing implying my involvement in this completely random set of traits that I received as a gift at the end of the event. All jokes aside, another big thanks goes out to Paradox Interactive for sponsoring this video and for inviting me to watch the joust over in the UK. I had an absolute blast at the event, you can see more of it on my Twitter linked in the description down below, and I had just as much fun with the DLC so far too. It is good stuff. The number of options unlocked between the DLC and free update is astounding, and I hope this video gives you some insight on a few of the dirtier tricks you can put to use when you dive in. Remember that you can grab the Chapter 2 DLC for just a few more bucks than the single DLC itself, and get even more DLC when it releases further down the line. Again, it is an absolute steal if you already know you like Crusader Kings 3. If you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to hit the like button down below, and for more strategy gaming content, feel free to subscribe. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who have been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.